everyone. So um, this is obviously a really different setup, obviously not as high quality. I'm actually just filming straight off my MacBook and um, I know the lighting's terrible. I'm sitting on my bed and I look very zombie-like with my bleached eyebrows. I know it looks crazy, but anyway, um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I wanted to do a quick uh, book review with Lit Chat and it's just, usually I don't do them because they're just time consuming for me to do like book, like, I don't know, I just find it much easier to film it directly off my MacBook Pro because for book reviews I usually do them, I have to do them right after I finish the book, otherwise I tend to forget what the book was about and also, um, like I read so many books that it starts to mix, like the stories get all mixed up in my mind if I don't do the review right away. So I thought I would just do it quickly now. I'm just chilling at home. So today I'm going to be reviewing um, Dark Inside by Jen Roberts. And she's actually a Canadian writer. And so that's kind of um, what drew me to the book also. Um, you know, I haven't really been reading a lot of Canadian authors. And what's really cool about this story is that part of the story or a lot of the story is actually set in Vancouver and can Vancouver Canada is actually where I grew up so it was kind of really fun to read a book set in my hometown city so this book is kind of like a post apocalyptic genre now a lot of people tend to throw dystopias together with post apocalyptic genre and I think they're pretty different post apocalyptic to me is more just like corrupt government and a society that's like really screwed up and post-apocalypse to me is usually a world where a huge disaster has taken place either there's been like a nuclear war or zombies or like you know there's been like a zombie infestation or something like that so to me that's more like post-apocalypse where there's been some kind of either like a natural disaster or like a disease or something that has changed the world in that way versus just a regular dystopia where just the world is so screwed up. So this book I would categorize more as a post-apocalyptic genre. There is this massive earthquake in North America. It doesn't really explain what happens, but there's like suddenly this massive earthquake that erupts and tons of people obviously are killed right away in this earthquake because it's like a natural disaster. And it, I think the earthquake is so strong that it takes place pretty much all of like North America. What happens after the earthquake is it follows the narrative of four different characters. So there's like one main character, I think her name is Ares. I can't really, I can't remember if it's Arya or Ares. I think it's Ares. And she's like the main character and then there's three other sort of side characters and the story follows what happens to them after the earthquake so it's kind of takes place in a very short time period and the time is like continuous you know so it just it follows them from the earthquake until what happens like a few weeks later or a few few days after the earthquake and after this earthquake has like rocked this continent, people are starting to change. So they realize that's like something else must be happening. They think there's like, I don't know, people get super, super violent. There's like a ton of violent outbreaks and people like killing each other and getting beat up or getting shot for like no apparent reason. So these four, these four characters, Mason, Ari's, Clementine and Michael. Yeah, those are like the main four characters. And it follows their narrative like after the earthquake as they try to battle their way to safety because yeah, they think there's been kind of like a zombie outbreak, but they're not sure if they're zombies or like what happens, but basically the remaining people turn like ultra ultra violent. So they're kind of normal still, like they're still like normal human beings, but they realize that a lot of other people who've either been infected by this virus or something, they just turn like ultraviolet and just want to kill everyone left alive, or they want to like convert them. So entire like towns get slaughtered by these ultraviolet gangs. So these four, um, I think they're all like teens, but they meet up with other like people as they go they're trying to find their way to safety in this like very violent world. I really like this book because it like it was very very suspenseful. There was a lot of stuff like happening. There was a lot of action. It wasn't it was very fast paced. So it wasn't one of those books where it just like drags on and on and like nothing happens for like the first half. So it's very very suspenseful. The um the plot is like fast moving and I liked the characters because the characters interact with other people so it's not just like it's just not it's not just those four people that you meet you actually meet a lot of other people as well in the story um 
at the end, the end was like a little bit of a letdown for me because it, it didn't really, um, like, I'm not going to tell you what happens, obviously, but, um, the ending was kind of like, well, I'm not really sure what's going to happen now. It is going to be a, like, I don't know if it's a trilogy or if it's like a sequel. I mean, there is going to be a sequel. So I'm guessing there, like the next book is going to continue on after what happens. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this book overall. I thought it was like a good, you know, post-apocalyptic, um, book. If you're interested in that, I would re recommend it. It's called Dark Inside by Jen Roberts. Okay, so the next book that I briefly wanted to talk about is Shadows, which is actually the second book in a trilogy. It's called the Ashes Trilogy, and the author is Ilsa J. Bick. Obviously, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the first book. If you haven't read um, Ashes, then I would highly recommend you start reading the series. This is my current, like, probably favorite um book like series or trilogy at the moment. Um, Ashes is spectacular and I reviewed that on Goodreads. If you're interested in like seeing how I reviewed that then I will um, link it to my Goodreads profile. You can see what I how I reviewed Ashes. This is going to be a review for the second book which is called Shadows and I love this book. I received this actually as a um, advanced readers copy before it was published and I read it like right away. I read it within like I think two days. I was just so absorbed. So the second book, if you haven't read Ashes, obviously this isn't really gonna make much sense to you, but if you have read Ashes, Shadows picks up exactly where Ash is left off. So Alex at the end of the first book, um, she's like left kind of running for her life and it's like major cliffhanger. So Shadows picks up exactly at that point where the first book ends. So there's like really no, like it's 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 completely time continuous. Actually, the, the main difference in this book compared to the first one is that there's multiple points of view. I think there's quite a few characters that get introduced. I'm not sure how many, but there's a lot of different points of view. So some, like each chapter kind of follows a different person. So obviously Alex is still like our main character, but then and we also get to know more about, you know, the other people like that were introduced in Ashes that weren't, you know, focused on so much. They get a more central role in Shadows and like it, the book talks more um, about it. Often what happens if I'm reading a book with multiple points of view or multiple narrators is that there's like one main story that I really really enjoy and that I want to know more about and then there's other stories that don't really interest me and they're just kind of I have to get through them to get back to the story that I do care about and with this one it really wasn't like that at all. Like I really enjoyed all the different points of view and they were all extremely like heart pounding like they were very very action-packed they were all extremely interesting characters the characters were all very different this is something that often I have the issue with like multiple points of view is that often the characters just kind of read very much the same and here it wasn't like that the world that they live in with these like zombies and like I think they're called the change it gets even more and more violent so this is actually a really really gruesome book um <laughs> there's like a lot of killing there's a lot of very um, gory things that happen, a lot of very sad things that happen. Like, that's kind of what I liked about this book is that it wasn't predictable because often in books it's like, oh, the good characters always live and the bad, the bad guys die. And it wasn't like that in this book. Sometimes good characters would end up getting killed. And that kind of made it a little bit more realistic for me, even though it was like sad. It's, I, I enjoy books that kind of keep you guessing as to what's going to happen. At first it was kind of annoying because you, like, if you don't read the second book right after you finish Ashes, then it, it might be a little bit confusing to keep the characters apart. But actually the more, you like after a few chapters, you can totally keep all the stories. Like, I mean, I was able to keep all the stories on track. So that wasn't too hard for me. You know, I started remembering who the characters were because obviously, you know, I hadn't read, like I'd read the first book almost a year ago. So yeah, it was, it was really, really gripping. I loved this second book. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail of what the actual story, because that, that would completely give it away. And the story is so intense and like so many things happen that are just so amazing and just so interesting that I don't want to like tell you and give you a bunch of spoilers. I definitely think if you enjoyed reading Ashes, you would, you will love the second one. Um, 
If you haven't read this entire trilogy, I totally recommend you check it out. It's very fast paced. It's a lot of action. There aren't a lot of these cheesy like love triangle, tr love triangles that's very typical of like young adult literature, which I'm just getting so sick of. Um, so definitely read Ashes first because like I said, Shadows picks up right where Ashes left off. So you will have to read it. And the ending, oh my God, the ending of Shadows is like, ah, it's, it's just, Oh my god, it's just out there. I will tell you that it's, you know, there is going to be a third book. I am so excited for the third book because the the ending is like a huge cliffhanger again. So, yeah, I loved I love the second book um in the Ashes trilogy. I totally recommend you check out this author if you haven't heard of her before. Currently, what am I reading? Oh yeah. Um I'm reading The Forsaken. So, I'm reading it on my I read all my books on Kindle. Yeah, I'm reading currently The Forsaken by Lisa M. Sta Stasi, and I also started Unholy, which is the second book in the Unwind trilogy by Neil Schusterman. And I'm kind of disappointed with Unholy, the second one. It's it's really not so good as Unwind. Unwind was amazing. I loved it, and Unholy, I'm like I'm halfway through, and I'm just forcing myself to finish it. I'm just not into it at all. But The Forsaken is pretty good. I'm about halfway in Forsaken, so I'll probably finish that tonight. So I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this little lit chat. Um, it's much, much less edited and stuff. So maybe I'll try and do more like this. It's just a lot easier for me to do them directly on my laptop. So let me know if this is like fine with you guys. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And oh, make sure to follow me on Goodreads if you want to know more like about books that I currently am reading or what I like. Um, I will link my Goodreads account below. So yeah, that's it. See you guys later. Bye.